Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of Study Sesh on Boston Broadcasts. It's where we break down these complex bits of theory into bite-sized chunks of knowledge that you can really get your teeth into and kind of chew on uh, as you go through your course. I'm Camilla Bath and today we're taking a serious look at something that really lies at the heart of every great brand that you encounter and that's storytelling, right? So. You think about your favorite brands for a second. I don't know, maybe it's a brand of sneaker uh, that you just can't live without. Maybe it's a, a, a takeaway place that you really like going to on a Friday night. And I don't know if you've ever wondered why you might feel so connected to one brand and not the other. Why will you go out of your way to get this burger instead of the one that's just down the street, right? And the secret here is, is it's not actually about the product, it's about the story behind the product. And if you're a brand, obviously, the challenge at the moment, these days, in this world of multiple platforms of ours, is to cut through the noise so that people can actually hear your story. You can have a great story, but if no one's listening to it, it's not going to help you. And you want them to hear your story because you want them to connect with you. So there are a bunch of storytelling techniques that brands use to grab people's attention uh, in a world that we know is filled, saturated with ads already. But let me tell you, there is none more powerful than the power spot, right? And today we've got the fabulous Sharita van der Berg with us to explain what a power spot is, why it's such a powerful tool in a brand's marketing kit. She's an absolute pro at helping brands find their voice and then tell their story. So Sharita, welcome back to the sesh. Thanks, Camilla. It's nice to be back. So let's kick things off. Before we get to the power spot itself, I want us to talk a little bit about storytelling. We've all heard brand storytelling as this thing, right? Why is it so crucial in communication these days? What's the secret here? So the thing that people tend to forget is we grow up with stories. People tell us stories since we are babies. Okay? So storytelling is a way of communicating with people, um, of forming that bond, of creating loyalty between people um, and communication. Well, communication is then so important to create this connection between people. So storytelling, I mean, it's not a new thing. What's new is just the personal factors. So I relate to you because of the story you, that you are telling me. There are certain elements within your story that I can relate to, which immediately makes me feel closer to you. So stories are really what makes brands relatable and memorable, right? So now let's look at the word power spot, this term that comes up a lot in radio. Can you break down for us exactly what a power spot is? what a power spot isn't, and how it fits into this world of brand storytelling. So let's start with a power spot is not an advert. So it doesn't live within a spot block. It's not a traditional uh, generic ad. It's literally me as a brand sitting, looking at which presenter fits my brand the best. So the presenter has the opportunity to say no, they don't want to partake in this because they're working with another brand already. Or yes, they absolutely love this because they have a connection with this brand already. So what they then do is they form live interactions um, between themselves and the content. So they literally take the content, they make it their own, and from here, they create memorable conversations and we try as far as possible to create emotive conversations. So we try and have them tell a story that brings out some sort of an emotion out of the person listening, whether it's laughing or whether it's inspiration or sadness, whatever it might be. So the thing here is we as people tend to switch off as soon as we hear that something is an advert as soon as i hear that you are trying to sell me something and cold call you know um we don't listen any further so that's why power spots are so valuable also why they're so pricey because what they do it's so much more effort also um because there's additional steps that need to go through the Produ producers and the presenters need to think about how they're going to incorporate this. A lot of the time there's social media or other aspects connected to this thing as well. So in essence, what we then do is we script what I want to call a guideline. So we don't tell them exactly what to do. 
um, we say this is the essence of this brand. This is where we want you to focus. We want you to bring in your own personal story into this. Um, and then at the end, you might, I don't know, have a 30 second generic spot that you will be playing. But the main gist of this is that I am delivering my brand's message um, in an organic, conversational manner that can get you as the listener to connect because it's easy to forget how much power a presenter actually has because people listen to this presenter for a reason. They trust this presenter. They see them as loyal. So if this presenter is telling me I can buy this brand or invest in this brand, I trust their judgment, um, which is something a normal advert cannot do. And that's where storytelling is so, so, so important for us. Because without storytelling, this thing is going to fall flat. It's always about, it's about the why. Why should I listen to you? What value is in it for me from a listening perspective before I give you the gist of this brand? So it's really so, not just about pushing a product, right? We've also got to connect with the people who are potentially going to buy this product or service on a deeper level. We've got to make them feel something. I want us to get super practical now, Sharita. Let's say we're creating a power spot and maybe we'll do one mm. for, I don't know, like let's take a meal kit service, right? For busy people who don't like to buy all the ingredients and think about how to cook things. They want to make a meal, but they want to do it the easy way, right? Like, um, if you think of something like you cook, right? They're, they're meal kits, everyone's heard of that one, right? So. How would you, Sharita, go about developing a script for that? Talk us through your process. What do you start thinking about first and how do you develop it into a power spot that might work? So firstly, it's about, the thing to remember is there are, so there's a branded content where it's basically an unendorsed power spot where you say you've heard about this wonderful product and you have no time, maybe you should try it, you haven't yet. Or if in this case, let's do an endorsed power spot where I also then pay a fee to said presenter. First thing I do is go and have a look at the presenters on said station. I choose one that will fit this brand the best. Someone who in this case is really busy, but is still into being healthy, doesn't have the time to go out and buy all the products, but they like cooking or they love cooking. So they still want to come and compile their own meal at home. So I would start looking at that. Um, also something I don't like doing one power spot. So I like creating story arcs from these power spots. So um, because I feel like one power spot isn't going to be enough for the audience to connect to me as the presenter. So we'll have a few of them. So let's say then we start the story. We start talking about um, how difficult, well not difficult, how busy our day-to-day -day life is, which is something a lot of people can relate to. I get home at seven o'clock in the evening, then I haven't had time to go and do my shopping yet, but ugh, I really don't want to eat fast foods. You know, I'm tired of eating all that burgers and chips. I really just want a home cooked meal that I feel like I made myself. Um, then you can come in with someone speaking about, oh, there's this thing, this app, this website that does exactly this for you. You can even choose if you're a vegetarian or a pescatarian or a vegan, um, or you simply want family meals if you have a whole family. Then you like, then you can go and use that thing. And then you, um, this is now if there's two presenters, but even if there's just one, you're like, I just discovered this thing. And I was very skeptical at first, but I ordered from them. They delivered. And wow, if you look at the, the packages that they give you every single thing individually in, it's so hygienic. They give you the directions. Yes, you can see I've used a uh, said product before. Um, they tell you exactly how to assemble, and I am a startup cook, maybe. Um, I really want to cook for myself, but, you know, I struggle with it. And here they tell me exactly how much of what to do, how to do it. And, you know, at the end of the day, I was so proud of myself because I made my own meal. Um, 
it's not necessarily from scratch because they already gave me everything I need. And I was really proud of myself. And it was wonderful not having these fa uh, this fast food for a change. And I chose the three day option. I think next time I'm going to choose the five day option so that I can see um, what else I can do. I'm also getting friends over. So I've decided to use this service for them because at the end of the day, the service, let's say you cook is there to make my life easier while still being healthy and while still feeling like it's me cooking. Um, so it's not taking everything away from me in the kitchen. Um, it's just helping me to stick to, let's say I'm on a diet, stick to my diet or stick to my dietary requirements in this case. Um, and then I would always do a call to action. You have to do a call to action at the end of a power spot. So let's say I've been, like I said, I've been using this product. I really, really believe in them. They are amazing. Go and check them out at youcook.co.za. Have a look at all the different options. They're super easy to use. They deliver to you. It's really, there's nothing easier than it. It comes in this big box that's cooled down so your food won't go off. And it really works out cost effective if you were to go and sit down and work out what it costs you to go to the grocery store, buy all the ingredients for said meal, then still coming and um, having to separate it into how much for this and how much ingredients of that. So it saves you time. There's a lot of value in it from a timing perspective and there's value in it from a money perspective and there's the fulfillment in it. So what I did now is I gave you a power spot, but I also explained why I added certain elements to this power spot. Um, so that you understand it because at the end of the day, when we do a power spot, there needs to be something of value in it for me as the listener. So are you saving me time in this case? Are you saving me money? Are you um, making my life easier in some way or another? So that's what we look at. We always look at the brand's objectives. What is it that they want to achieve? Um, obviously, all of them have different objectives that they need to fulfill and we make a story out of that and in this case there's so much you can do you can bring it back to um from this power spot you can now ask them to do an endorsed social media video or reel where they are actually using the content and sitting down with their family you know having this beautiful picture of them because you have to work, like I said, an emotion into what it is you are doing um, somehow. Mm. And I mean, I love how you start with the relatable problem here, right? So it's like you're, you're too busy to cook. Uh, here is the problem. It's a very clear thing that a lot of people battle with. And then you naturally introduce this meal kit as the hero of the story, the thing that is going to solve someone's problem. And this is what makes the power spot so effective at the end of the day. And it, but, but but I think the real challenge as well, Sharita, is, is to stay in a place of authenticity and also be genuine while doing it, right? Yeah. Because we've got to make sure these don't feel like ads. It's more like a friend who's sharing something awesome with you. That's where the vulnerability comes in. That's where the connection comes in and where I, as a presenter, have to tell my story. I have to link it to myself in some way or another. It doesn't necessarily have to be me, but it needs to be something personal. I can't simply, if I simply tell you about this thing and I don't relate it to myself, there will be no connection. That's the massive difference between an advert and or a live read and a power spot. A power spot is so powerful because me as the presenter, I am telling you that I endorse this thing because I have tried this thing. I believe in it. Here's my story. Here's my experience. Now you go and try it for yourself. Quick question for you. For anyone who's watching this, maybe they're thinking of becoming a marketer or an entrepreneur. What advice would you give them about using storytelling in their brand communication and specifically around the power spot? What have we left out? What have we not spoken about yet? So 
the biggest thing is knowing your audience. You have to know who you are targeting with this thing. Am I talking to someone who is um, a rural 70-year-old lady? Am I talking to a 21-year-old urban male? Um, who am I talking to? Who am I trying to target with this? Why am I trying to target them? What is my need? Because I need to know who you are, what your interests are, um, and what my need is. To fulfill in order for me to find a need for you because I need to go and find a need um, for the consumer to have okay so I go you have this problem whether you know it or not you have this problem and I'm here to solve it by doing xyz for you um, you need to understand your brand's core narrative what do you what does your brand stand for what are your values what's your value system at the end of the day um, it needs to be consistent in everything that you do, in all platforms. That cons consistency is there. Um, authenticity, like we mentioned, really, really important um, because it needs to feel genuine and relatable, which is why so many companies tend to veer towards testimonials um, type of advertising. So whether it's on TV or on their websites or on social media or on radio or on billboards, whatever. Uh, because we want to know that someone has tried it and trusts the specific brand. Um, the emotional connection, really big thing. We've spoken about that in detail. Um, also, it's a big thing. There's a massive difference between me explaining something to you versus showing you how it's done. So it's easy for me to say from a theoretical point of view, it would work like this versus me actually playing you let's say in this uh, in this instance an actual power spot or versus me playing you the actual an actual video um so that's a big thing for me it's about showing not telling that is something that a lot of people struggle with but it's about just breaking away from the theory we all know if you were to stand there and explain something for me theoretically blah 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 great stuff but if I actually bring an expert in or someone in who's gone through this thing and actually tell me their story, way more relatable. Um, connections are formed a lot easier that way. Then it's about bringing in the brand organically, which is why it's so important that whoever you are using needs to fit within this brand. Very important. You can't take someone with completely opposite values. It has to, their values have to align with your values. Um, in any way that you want to use them for just lack of a better word right now, um, stay on track. So this is where prep comes in. Preparation for everything and anything is exceptionally important when you do marketing um, in any form, advertising, marketing, whatever. You have to sit you go through this thing, you prepare this thing, you look at it, you go through it again, you prepare this thing. In fact, in my case, when I work with brands, this thing gets sent to different people. The, um, uh, the agents, different agencies have a say in it. The actual client has a say in it. Then we sit with said presenters. Presenters have a say in it. So this thing changes quite a few times before we get to the finalized and not actual script outline of what this presenter will be doing and will be speaking about. So there is a very concise hook at the beginning for me to hook you in, right? To get you interested, to get you to buy in. I have a middle section. I have an end section to this thing. I don't waffle on and I have no idea how to get out of this link. I know exactly what I'm doing. I know exactly how I'm getting out of this thing, okay? That is really important. Um, and that call to action I already mentioned, that it needs to be included within this thing. And we try as far as possible to integrate it into things you're currently already doing so that it's not something new. It's something that your audience, your consumers might already be familiar with because that way it's easier to entrench the brand into um, the consumer's mind because they already know what is coming up. They already love this, let's say, segment, for instance. Um, so they will be more open to, to and trusting then to take in this information that I am giving them.
I think that for me is the most impo- important segments to remember about creating um, not just a power spot, but a storytelling segment um, on whichever platform you are utilizing. Fantastic advice. Sharita, thanks so much for sharing your insight here. Remember everyone, it really is at the end of the day, it comes down to that authenticity, to being genuine, to connecting with people by being conversational and telling a real story. So it's not an ad, it's a conversation with people in which you show them something awesome. Uh, Thank you so much everyone for joining today's study sesh. Remember, we've got to tap into the power of storytelling to really set our brands apart. So catch you next time. We'll have more insights, more ideas, more fuel for your marketing and communications tech. Thank you.